for all. You know, I tell you what, I was in a, uh, I was in a courtroom this morning fighting a, a, a noise ordinance case from my preaching. Praise God, God's with me. And when I was in that courtroom, I realized it meant business. There was, it, it, there was order in that court, and there was a judgment in that court. And when God comes on the scene, there is, it is fearful when God takes the throne. You better be careful what you say, what you think. You're, God's on the throne right now, and He wants you to be changed and be saved. Uh, why is the need, why is there need, such a need for negativity with negativity? Uh, your beliefs? Why? No, 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 there's, the, sin is what's negative. People sin. I mean, look at your shirt, man. You got these, it's, what is this? Uh, it's a joke, by the way. A joke? Uh, the stars kind of make me a little, a little weary. Reminds me of, like, Satanism. But, I mean, I'm not saying that's what this shirt means. Black, black meowgic? It's a joke about it's oh, okay. Black. Anyways, I just, I get concerned because, you know, the Bible says that they blaspheme in matters they don't understand. There's blasphemies and there's demons behind certain things. Like, it's no joke. I mean, the Bible says, be serious and watchful in your prayers. Uh, huh? Oh, sorry. Uh, how do we know the Bible is a valid source for knowledge about the world? How, what gives it credibility? Well, well, it's been proven. I mean, the Bible's been proven for, for centuries. It's, it's, it's been around longer than you have, and it's going to be here when you leave. And, and, and there's, no other, there's no other testimony for, for Jesus, for uh, the miracles of God, Actually, power of God. Actually, um, the holy book of the Hindus, the Bhagavad Gita, predates it's not holy. The but it's not holy. But predates the Bible, so it's been longer around longer than no. that. Is that more credible than the Bible because it's older than the Bible? Well, no, because just because the Bible itself has only been in the canon, the 66 books, since whatever year it was. But 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 the Word of God's been established. Even the Book of Job is six six thousand something years old. I mean, since the world since the world ever even existed, the Word of God's been being recorded and established. And the, of the, of and, and, the, and, the, and the Buddhists have no testimony of God's power or the Holy Spirit. No other religion talks about God dwelling in man. Does the Buddhist teach about the Holy Spirit dwelling inside well, of you? It teaches about self. It's selfish. It's all about self-gratification. It's about self-worth. This gospel is about Jesus Christ who overcame death on the cross. He's king. He's God. He's the one to whom you're going to give an account for your life. Uh, how do you... You need, you, need, you need Jesus Christ to forgive you. Have you ever have you sinned? Um, have you sinned? That's not really... Do you know you sinned? Well, I... Do you have a conscience? Define sin, define... Well, I mean, your conscience, you know that when you lie, it's I'm wrong, right? I'm not only God if I have a conscience. Well, God gave you your conscience as a guide. Well, I'm saying, I'm saying, if you, if you lie, you know you have knowledge. The word conscience, conscience, means with knowledge. So you, when you know you've lied, that bears a record that you're guilty. Then why do we need God to judge us if we have our own record of what is good? Well, well because, because people get away, people seem like they get away with their lies and their acts of rebellion. So God has to bring an equal weight and measure. The Bible says God is a God of equal weights and measure. So, so, when, so, so when somebody commits murder, for example, and, 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 they, and they never get brought to justice in this world, God has to bring them to justice at some point in time or else, or else there'd be no, 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 no justice. Isn't the job of us as a society to, to um, judge murderers as opposed to um, um, it, it, sky being or something? Yeah, but not every murderer gets judged on earth, right? Well, it's the job of a society to, um, to look over that. We don't necessarily need religion well, 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 to be good. well, yeah, but does every murderer get judged by society? Does every murderer get judged, do you think? That doesn't prove, that doesn't prove that God exists, though. Well, it proves that he has to exist because murderers don't get away with murder. That's why people die. People die because of sin, and then, and then they have to face the consequences for their sin. So you're saying God doesn't do anything about it? He, he sent Jesus. That's how, he, that's how he took care of our sin, is he sent but Jesus to pay the penalty so that we wouldn't have to go to hell. But you just said the murderer would got away with it, so that means God did nothing about it under your own logic. No, but you, you're missing the fact that there's a judgment. There's the day of judgment. So after the, God is all-powerful. God's going to judge everything on the day. So, so because, because, because everything can't get judged right now, we know for a fact that everything does not get judged now. People, people can go, their whole lives will be child molesters, they can be murderers, they can be thieves, and then they can, they can be rich and then die a good old age and never get judged once. It doesn't mean that their sins and the things they did don't require a judgment. And you know that when you sin, it requires a judgment. And that's why Jesus, no, that's why Jesus came. Jesus came so that we wouldn't have to fall under judgment. Because otherwise, you, we'd all be condemned. I would be condemned if God didn't send Jesus Christ because I'd have no way for my sins to be dealt with now. I'd have to face judgment later, and that would be too late. So God requires human sacrifice to forgive us? But without the shedding of blood, there's no remission of sin. There's only one who could die. But it's you, not, you, you not human sacrifice. There's one human who had to be sacrificed. But, but here's, the good, here's the good news. He was raised from the dead three days later. Then what's the point that it's not sacrifice? Then? Well, he proved he had power over death. Because, because he, he, he proved that the grave couldn't hold him down. And that's the greatest act of love is to lay his life down. And then the greatest act of power is to be raised up again. 
And now that's how we know. The Bible says, because we have hope, we have fled. For because we have strong consolation, we have fled for refuge. Uh, you know, for the refuge, refuge of our soul. That's in Hebrews six. I have fled for refuge from my sin. I turn from my sin. I turn to Jesus because I know that He overcame the cross. There's five hundred plus witnesses. Psalm. They were willing to give their lives because of what Jesus did. Are you willing to give your life? What are you willing to give your life for, man? What do, What do you have conviction about? Well, uh, what are you living for? Well, I, I'm living for bettering our world. It seems like to me you, you, you kind of joke a little too much. You got your shirts and stuff. This is not a joke. This life is serious. People are dying and going to hell every day. And I am concerned. How, how, how do you know that? I'm concerned. I know. I've, I've experienced it. I mean, you, you've been to hell physically and come back to hell. Actually, I had heart, I had heart failure and I tasted it a little bit. Yeah, I, I, I went to the edge of the pit, man. The things I experienced, the I pain. Know that wasn't a dream. The pain. And the, no, I was awake when it happened. I had actual heart failure. I'm telling you a medical thing that I went through six years ago. And actually, God healed me. The doctors couldn't heal me. I took all the medicine and threw it in the garbage. They wanted to give me surgery. I said, you know what? I trust in God. The Bible says in Proverbs 3, it says, Do not be wise in your own eyes, but fear God and turn from evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. You know, when, you, when, you're, when you're about to take your last breath, you're going to need a miracle. You're going to need a miracle. God is not the God of the dead. He's the God of the living, Luke 20, verse 28. He is the God of the living. You, you know what happened on the day that Jesus was raised from the dead? Mary and Martha came, and there was an angel. It rolled the stone back, sat on top, and said, Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is risen indeed. You see, Christ is risen. I, I'm dead with Christ, therefore I know I'll be risen with him. My old life, my old nature, the things I used to do, I used to party. I used to do drugs. I used to drink. I used to do these things. It's been crucified. I am dead. I'm buried with him through baptism, and now I'm raised in newness of life. There's no newness of life in these philosophies. There's no newness of life. You're looking for a loophole. You're looking for a way out. It's going to happen. Death comes suddenly. And then Jesus Christ. And you're going to need Jesus. You can't wait till the last minute. It may not happen. You may not get that last chance to repent. Your chances right now. You need to quit being a prideful. Quit being a, you know, a philosopher. And all. You need to understand it's the foolishness of preaching that saves men. The Bible says... The message of the, I'm, are you, are the message you, of the cross. Against, uh, critical thinking, you say that I shouldn't be a philosopher. Well, the Bible says uh, in in Colossians chapter two verse eight, it says, "Don't let anyone deceive you through philosophy and empty deceit." It says, okay. "Hold on, let me just quote the verse. I just believe the Bible." It says, "According to the tradition of men, according to the basic principles of the world, and not according to Christ, for in Him it says dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily, and you are complete in Him, who is the head of all principality and power." You were circumcised, it says, in him with the circumcision of Christ, with the putting off of the deeds of the flesh. So, so the circumcision that I have is, is that I'm complete in Christ. People are looking for completion. People are looking for validation. People are looking for... Yeah, we find validation in each other and our, uh -huh. our personal experiences with each other in society as opposed to yeah. finding validation in a judgmental book that is written thousands well, of years. Judgments are good, man. Judgment, judgments can be good if, if you look if you're if you're in court and somebody did you wrong you'd want a judgment against them would you not well, are you right well, if somebody killed your mom and in the evidence lo it looked like the evidence was in their favor but you knew you knew they did it man you even you were a witness well, our or something. Are based on evidence not feeling in our court you would still want judgment though that's my point but here's the thing you you can try to look for validation in men your girlfriend your boyfriend your mom your sister your aunt your uncle but you know what they're gonna die someday are they going to be there forever? Can they can they take care of all your problems? See, what I, about depression? What about things that you can't see? I think, I think you're offering to offer way to your matters. With this idea that God somehow solves all of our problems when really we have well, no evidence well, that God exists. Well, He's God, and He there's, He he's, evidence, he's proved that He existed. With what? With creation. So all, all, all creation testifies of God. So do, can, do you know how to, you know how how a baby's formed in the womb? Do you, do, do, can, can, you know, can you create? Can you create something out of nothing? Create me a flower with some sand. I mean, show me. Show me how to. Show, show, me, show me how science makes something out of nothing. They've tried, man. The best they can do is take something they already have and then manipulate it and, and mix it together. I mean, can, can, a science, can a science create a tree out of out of out of basic stuff? Well, okay, so you know what I'm saying? There's there's stuff that's unexplainable, man. So you're saying that God created everything? Who created God? Because your, your yeah. logic implies that some that to be to exist, something needs a creator. Well, well the, the, re the reason why we have stability in this world and we have uh, you know you know foundational things that don't move is because we know that God is incorruptible. Look, if there was something that created God, then that would be God. You see, the, the God, there's no surprise over God. If, if God didn't know everything, if God wasn't all-powerful, then that, that thing, that mystery, or that but thing, the thing that God didn't have control over would be God. But God, you see, he's outside of time. 
A day is like a thousand years with God, and a thousand years is as one day. God looks at eternity, and he steps back, and he sees the whole thing. So you're saying that something can exist without a creator, let's such as God, then why can't we exist without a creator if God Well, 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 well because, because you know that you came from nothing. You were nothing at some point. You started from a seed, you know, in your mom's womb, a, a baby, and it's, that seed came from another seed, from another seed. Same thing with plants. They come from nothing. They start with nothing. The Bible says the word dust, and then someday you're going to return to the dust. We don't have all, and you, uh, all the yeah. answers to explain how we came, how life came about, but... <laughs> there's, a, there's, a, there's a true statement right there. Did everybody hear what he said? We don't have, we don't have all the answers to understand. But, but that That's why that God gave us the word. That doesn't mean the Bible is not answered. It oh, it is the answer. How do you know? Well, because I have a testimony. Like I said, I was saved from heart failure six years ago. It's a miracle. So, so how, so I was a miracle. Aren't you hearing what I'm saying? I have my heart failure. I was a sinner too. I was a dr I was a drunkard, a drug dealer. I was a marijuana. Sp God took all my sins out of my heart. He made me a new creation. You know, my, my life was was destroyed, man. My marriage was failing. My wife, she was getting ready to leave me. God, I've even heard God's voice audibly. I've heard His voice like I'm talking to. Him. Well, I'm trying to make, make the point. Actually, just so you know, I don't mind debating, but I'm a preacher and I'm called to preach. So if God tells me to preach, I'm just going to preach. Well, I have. I don't have to. I don't have to listen. I have to preach. That's actually my mandate. Right, well, you don't have to listen to me either. You can walk away. You have to understand the Bible says for me to preach the word. Please. Well, I'm I'm just telling you that if I if I if I continue on preaching, you can't know what to preach if you won't if you don't listen. listen to what they're saying. No, no, you don't understand. The Bible says to be careful, you know, because people will will go on and on with these things that aren't biblical. And when these people need to hear the Bible, that's why I'm here to preach right. the scripture. Right. So what you're, if you're, what so. you're saying so you gotta is listen not to relevant. Well. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. I've I've listened to them. I mean, but at some point, I will cut the I will I will draw a line. So okay. the Bible says the Bible says to to by one and two admonitions as a man is a heretic. It says knowing his warped and sinning. It also says don't give what is holy to the dogs. Cast your pearls before swine. Matthew seven. So, so I mean I'm, I I love debating. I could debate all day. I could go back debating. and forth. You're not debating. You're well, listening to them and connecting them to the word by what well, you're saying. Well, the Bible says the Bible says in First Peter three fifteen it says, says always be ready. Yeah, listen, always be ready listen, to give a defense. Oh no, I'm a preacher, man. I'm yeah. called to preach. I'm called to preach. <laughs> you have to understand it. We're not. We, we're not. No, I get you. The Bible, the Bible says you have to... You sit there and listen to someone, too. They're, they're you, the, spirit, the spiritual conversation. Well, I, look, the guy will tell you I've listened to him, but at some point, if I say I'm done talking to him, that's the Lord's telling me to. You, tell me to stop it. Yeah. <laughs> well, then I'll just keep preaching. Well, um, what I was saying was... Like, let me ask you one more, one more. Oh, they did. Oh. Yeah, we talked for a long time, man. I mean... One more question, I'll let you go, okay? Okay. What is it? Let's, let's just presume that you have your anecdote of, of what happened to you, and that's your experience. That's you. But no, let's, go ahead. Like, let's presume that happened to someone in a, a Hindu or a Muslim. They said that Allah saved me or that... Vishnu saved me. Would you give validity to that argument? We said it's a valid argument mm. because if they had the same experience you did, but just replace God no, no. with Allah or, or Vishnu. Uh, uh, Allah, Allah didn't. Allah didn't. Allah didn't. No, I, I don't. Lord Jesus Christ is the God of all gods. Well, yeah, you know, you know, you know, there is no other God besides Jesus and and Muhammad. None of them. They're false prophets. Muhammad and Buddha are false prophets. They. They didn't rise from the dead. Muhammad didn't pay the, our death, uh, our penalty on the cross. And that's how you know that Muhammad can't save anybody. Doctrine of sanctification and redemption <clears throat> from sin. It's it's all of the, the all of the others. There you have to do all of these things in order to be righteous. But God was righteous for us, and that's that's the difference. So like, God, Allah doesn't save. Mm -hmm. Like that. those those other religions don't save. They condemn. Well, 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 yeah, you know, it's it's true in a sense what she's saying, but but here's the other side of it. Here's the other side of it. The Bible says those those who do what is righteous are righteous as he is righteous. So 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 the key is is that. Yes, but we do righteous because of the Holy Spirit. We are righteous because of the Holy Spirit. We are not righteous by anything we do. Well, the Bible says these those who do what is righteous because as he is righteous are righteous. That's First John three. But we were righteous first. We were made righteous in Christ uh -huh. before we could do works. Well, well, yeah, but you're you're not understanding that 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 if that if that doesn't become true, the Bible says that if, if you don't actually walk if you don't actually walk righteously, the Bible says you're not saved. I mean, the Bible says. That, um, That's true, but you're expecting people to rock righteously before they've been made righteous. No, no, no. The Bible, the Bible says to first count the cost. That's Luke 14. The Bible says if man, if if he comes to me, he must first count the cost. You need to simplify it. Man. And Jesus, yeah. simplify the it. word is simple. The word is simple. The word is simple. No, you're confused if you can't understand the word. I'm giving you nothing but Bible verses as my defense. So what what is confusing about that? It's a simple message. Can I tell you? The word of God. The word of God is simple. Uh huh. You're sure it's really offensive to non-Christians. Well, non well, well, then you can't be a Christian. There's no way you can be a Christian. I, I you're not a Christian. You're not a Christian if you believe this is offensive because you're ashamed of the gospel. No. The Bible says in Romans chapter 1, verse 16, I, I am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of God to all who believe. 
First for the Jew and also for the Greek, for the righteousness of God is revealed from faith to faith, for the just shall live by faith. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16 says, All Scripture is given by inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof. Well, that's, you're, talking about, you're talking about food, stomach for the food. Food for the stomach and stomach for food. That's why women shouldn't teach. This is the whole reason why women shouldn't teach. Because the woman was first deceived. Yes, it says. A woman is not to teach a man. She was first deceived, the Bible says. You're trying to you're trying to teach things you don't understand. Oh, you're a My shirt. You're a yes, yes. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says that. The Bible says a woman is not to teach man. She was first deceived. It says she said my shirt was offensive. This is a Bible verse. So the people who watch this video will be the judge of you. Well, then you're disagreeing with her. Why don't you rebuke her then? Well, you see, you're, you're, what the Bible says to the Bible says to reprove, rebuke, and exhort. Why can't I rebuke her? Why can't I rebuke her? Yeah. I said it's offensive to non-Christians. You're not going to reach people. The word of God is supposed to be offensive. A friend of the world is the enemy of God. I agree with that. The friend of the world is the enemy of God. Really, really quick. He who sins is of the devil, you say. That's what the Bible says. Okay, but aren't we all born with sin? We're all are we sinners. not? We're all is that your excuse? We not, no, we're not all, all sinners. The Bible, says, Bible says in Isaiah 128, the sinners and transgressors you, you shall not, be destroyed together. The sin, the, said. First, I'll tell you right now. The Bible said. says, no, look, we're all, the Bible says all have sin. All have sin. And false, no, all have sin. All have sin. Past tense, have sin. All have sin. A baby's not born in sin. A yes, baby is. is not born with sin. A baby doesn't go around walking in sin. It's a baby. It can't okay. even suck its thumb, man. Okay, a baby born with sin. You don't get it, man. You it was you were pure at one point in time, then you went to college, you started smoking weed. That's your problem. People smoke weed and they drink beer and they start having sex and they start living fornication. And now they start saying to yourself, We're all born in sin, man. You see, I'm stuck here. You don't get it, man. You're a child of the devil. The Bible says all who sin are of the devil. I've been redeemed. I was a child of the devil. I have a testimony. I've been forgiven. We're all sin, but if we repent our sins, we are You go and sin no more. The Bible says to go and sin no more. Not some more. Not a little more. No more. But ultimately, we all sin no matter what. No, 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 no. Show me that scripture in the Bible. Show me that scripture in the Bible. You see? Here's, here's the problem. What sin are you in right now? What sin are you in right now that you can't repent of then? You looking at porn? What are you doing? Tell me. Just no, confess. No, no, Nothing. Well, then, if we all sin every day, then what's your point? No, I'm saying we all sin at some point in, in, in another. You don't understand, man. You're making an excuse for sin. sin. No, I'm not. Look, not look, all. look. The Bible says. The Bible says in Hebrews, sin. Hebrews if chapter 10, verse 26 sin, says, "If we sin, sin willfully, there's no more sacrifice for sins, but a fearful expectation of judgment, fire, indignation, which will devour the adversaries of God. For if any man rejected Moses' law at one or two testimonies." It says, oh, it says, oh, it says, you trample the Son of God underfoot and count the blood of the covenant by which you were saved, a common thing, and salt to the Spirit of grace. Oh, but the Lord will judge his people. It's a fearful thing to fall into the hands of the living God. Fearful thing for sinners. The Bible says this, you who say we're all just sinners. What about 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 17? The Bible says that judgment will begin at the house of God. If it begins with us, what will be the end of those who do not believe? The Bible says, if scarcely a righteous man be saved, where will the ungodly and sinner appear? Where will the ungodly and sinner appear? This guy said we're all sinners. He's saying he's a Christian. He's saying we're all sinners. He just judged everybody out here. We're all sinners. What about to the saints in Ephesus? To the saints in Colossae? To the saints in Rome? I'm a saint, man. I'm not a sinner. I don't identify with being a sinner, practicing sin, lawlessness, rebellion towards God. That's the way I used to live, man. I, I tell you, God's mercy is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him, the Bible says. You fear God, the Bible says in Proverbs 14, verse 2. It says, he who walks in his uprightness fears the Lord. David said in Psalms 18, he said, I kept myself from my iniquity, he said. He said, he said I did not wickedly depart from my God, he said. I did not put his statutes behind me. The Bible says God is lightning in him. There's no darkness at all. No darkness in God. He who says, I know God and walks in darkness is a liar and the truth is not in him. That's darkness when you say we live in sin. It's okay to sin. Christians sin. That's darkness. Go ahead. 
so, so you're pretty, all right, at the end of the day, your motive here is to get people saved, right? Well, my first, my first motive for being here is to be obedient to what the Bible says. The Bible says, cry aloud, spare not, go tell my people their sins. That's what it says. Right, so to make go, 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 to, why are you, why are you on the other, you're, 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 you're in the middle going back and forth. If you agree, then, then get in line with the Bible. And the Bible says to warn every man. What is this Christianity on campus, man? People are so double-minded. Oh, no, no, your shirt is offensive, First John chapter 3. You should no, never I'm put that in. I know you didn't say that. She said that. But then you said they were all sinners, man. It's a false teaching. Nobody's perfect. The Bible condemns sinning and sinners. The Bible says sinners go to hell. Uh-huh. realize that what you're doing is pushing people further No, no, the Bible says that, that he, the Bible says I can do nothing against the truth before the truth. You're lying right now. You're lying. You have smooth speech. You don't understand. The Bible says open rebuke. The Bible says open rebuke is better than love, carefully concealed. This is open rebuke. Jesus rebuked. Look, look, let me tell you what Jesus did. The Bible says, in this, you can agree with this woman here or you can agree with the Bible. The Bible says in John Chapter 7, verse 7, out of Jesus' mouth himself, he said, The world cannot hate you, but it hates me, Jesus said, because I testify of it that its deeds are evil. That's what Jesus said. That's how he preached. Jesus, he comes out here and preached. He testified. He said, If your hand, Jesus said, If your hand causes you to sin, he said, You better chop your hand off. It'd be better for you to have one hand to enter into life than to have two hands to enter into hell fire. That's what Jesus said. He coined the word hellfire. He coined it. Jesus did it. Jesus coined it. Yeah, and whoever continues in sin does not born of God. He hasn't seen God, 1 John 3 says. You continue in sin, you haven't even seen God, you don't know God. The Bible says the, Bible says the fear of God is to hate evil, pride and arrogance in the evil way. The Bible says in Psalms chapter 37, verse 37, says, Mark the blameless man and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. But that says the transgressors and the sinners, they will be destroyed together. And all those who forsake the Lord, they'll be consumed from the earth. The wicked will be taken from the earth. When the wicked spring up like the grass and all the workers of iniquity flourish, it is that they shall be destroyed forever. But God is on high, Psalms 92 says. He, he says, behold the enemies of the Lord, the enemies of the Lord. It says, oh, God's going to destroy them. Folks, I come to you, there's love and mercy. I know, man, I look, a grace abounds. The grace of God that bringeth salvation. I'm coming here in the name of God. Grace of God. Straight to the point, man. We're, we're, we're preach the word. That's why I give you Bible verses. The word, say, the word of God. The word of God. God gives bread to the, bread to the eater and seed to the sower, the Bible says. Bible, huh? I don't just take people's hands without talking to them. Are you a born again Christian? I am. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually a pastor. Here in do, do you? Do you no. The Bible says. The Bible says, "Don't lay hands hastily on any man. Don't share anyone else's sin." Hold on one second. Yeah. yeah. You're born again. Hey, Are you agreeing with everything I'm doing out here? Well, here, here's what I want to say, man. I'm a pastor actually here in town. And okay. Pastor in the Marine Corps. Yeah. And so I just want to come and just bless you, man. I just want to say this okay. is like, man, the world, there's strife. People are constantly coming at one another, this and that. Uh -huh. And as a pastor here in town and as a Marine, uh -huh. you know what I'm saying, I just want to come out and say, hey, I understand that you're trying to preach the truth. If we can okay. inspire and encourage. Okay. Inspire and encourage, man. I would really appreciate so, that, so, too. So, so. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. I'm help, inspiring and encouraging. I know. Help reinforce what I do here. So, so are you agreeing? So you're not really agreeing fully with I'm not, I'm I'm not saying I disagree at all. I'm not doing it. Oh. I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying I want to inspire okay. and encourage people towards something. Well, that's, that's that's great, which God has for us. God has well, this is inspiring and encouraging, so that's what... It's called turning, right? Repentance. Yeah. yeah. So well, repentance is turning, and we can inspire and encourage people to do it too, man. Well, well, what you're doing well yeah, today. but this is inspiring and encouraging, so I don't really know where you're going with that. Well, everything I'm saying to you is inspiring and encouraging. The Bible says to admonish one another. The Bible says to reprove, re rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. It is just to the point clear as crystal. I'll make it clear as crystal. Luke... Chapter 13, verse 3 says, If you do not repent, you will all likewise perish. That is clear and to the point. What do you got to repent of? What is it? The pornography, the masturbation, the drugs, the alcohol, the love of the world? You better turn. The Bible says turn and live. Turn to Jesus Christ. He'll forgive you. He'll cleanse you. But if you don't turn, you get no. I'm here just for a quick, quick, quick preach of the day. Folks, I'm concerned. I'm concerned not only for the unbelievers, I'm concerned for the professing Christians, I'll be honest with you. The Bible says in the latter times, men would depart from the faith, giving heed to, to seducing spirits, doctrines of devils, speaking lies in hypocrisy, having their own conscience seared with a hot iron. You know that scripture? Well, you, you, I think you need God Jesus, man. You need to turn to Jesus and be born again. If you're not born again, you're not going to enter the kingdom of God. 
Are you born again? Are you, don't you see your need to be changed? God's love, His mercy, His truth, the Word. Jesus said in John 8, verse 31, He said, if you continue my word, you'll be my disciples indeed. You'll know the truth, and the truth will make you free. Ha! Freedom in Jesus. Man, there's no freedom in marijuana, pot smoking, drugs, alcohol, sex out of marriage, homosexuality. There's no freedom in that. Man is a slave to that to whom he which he obeys, Romans 6, verse 16 says. says, whether of sin leading to death or of obedience leading to righteousness. Righteousness, peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Do you have righteousness? Do you have peace? Do you have joy? You've you got to have the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the, is, the, is, the, is, the, is the counselor, the teacher. The Bible says the Spirit of truth will teach you whatever I say. The Spirit of God is what lives in me. I come to you with the power of the Spirit. I have a testimony of the Spirit of God. The message, the message, man, the Holy Spirit. I was preaching it. I was preaching the message. I was preaching to you about, about, about the Bible. Is that not clear enough for you? I don't know how you I don't know how you're a Christian, man. I do not I do not agree with this type of Christianity. I don't I you're right about that. You're right about that. Even Satan can quote the Bible. But he doesn't obey it. That's the difference. Are you judging me? What am I not obeying about the Bible, huh? I'm trying to do what Jesus Christ told me to do. The Bible says to speak the word. Do you have any charity for me? I'm raising money for all churches. Oh, I, no, no I'm, I'm not here for that. Um, Jesus Christ, folks, to preach the word. This is preaching the word, the foolishness of preaching. Do you have something you want to say before you go or something? Or? No, I want to ask you a question and have a discussion, but I don't have time right now. And I know that oh, okay. Preaching. Maybe we could talk later. Send me a message online. Online? Yeah. yeah, I'll do that with you. Look, folks, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians, let's see if this is clear enough gospel message for this guy back here. The Bible says... In 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to those who are being saved, it is the power of God. The message of the cross. Is it foolishness to you what I'm preaching? Or are you being saved? And you can see power in what I'm saying. You know, the Bible says, the Bible says, open rebuke is better than love carefully concealed. The Bible says, oh, your message is not loving enough. It doesn't promote enough love. This guy, this pastor, that's this guy, come up to me. Or just encourage more. You know, is it not uplifting and encouraging to stir you up for the things of God? Oh, people, they just they don't understand. It's because they don't. It's because they don't preach the truth. They don't understand the seriousness of God's judgments. I know there's mercy. You know God is merciful. You're still here breathing air. You still have a chance. The Bible says. The Bible says that it. It says that those who are better, better is a living dog than a dead lion. It says because those who are living are joined together. But those who are dead, it says the dead don't praise God. The dead don't praise God. The message is you're going to die. And you're not going to be praising God in the grave. You need to praise God and give him glory now. He's worthy of your glory. The Bible says, it says, if anybody worships God, he must worship him in spirit and in truth. John 4, verse 24. You're worshiping God in spirit and truth. The spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, it cleanses you. The Bible says in 1 Peter 1, verse 14. It says, as obedient children, not conforming yourself to your former lust as in your ignorance, but as he who called you is holy, you be holy in all your conduct, for as it is written, be ye holy, for I am holy, says God. God says, be holy. Are you being holy? Are you drinking Guinness? What are you doing, man? This college lifestyle is tearing you down. It's tearing you down. What are you trying to convince? I was just talking about people's sin and how it destroys them. And the Bible says, turn from your wickedness. Say that we should just no, nobody should be sinning after Oh, yeah, that would be the best. The best thing would be if everybody would turn from their I don't sin. Think that's possible for any other oh, it's possible, person. man. I know because I'm experiencing every day. I don't walk in any willful sin. My conscience is clear, been enlightened. I have change. I have milestones in my life. I have victory. I got testimony after testimony. I have testimony after testimony of victory. Victory over masturbation, victory over pornography, victory over drugs and alcohol, victory over my television. Victory over the worldly music. The Bible says a friend of the world is the enemy of God. A friend of the world. Victory over covetousness. Victory. Victory over cowardice. The Bible says if you are ashamed. The Bible says, the Bible says to deliver you from your sin. To deliver you. That's what it says. ultimately described to be like Jesus daily. I agree. Well, that's good. The Bible says in 1 John chapter 3, it says, Do not be deceived. He who does what is righteous is righteous as he is righteous. The Bible says he who sins is of the devil. For the devil has been sinning from the very beginning. And for this reason, Jesus Christ was revealed to destroy the works of the devil. The sin, it was what God came to destroy in your life. The works of the devil. I don't want you to be the child of the devil. 
What's, what's the devil going to do to you? You're going to go to, you're going to go to hell with the devil and be tormented forever. Or you can go to heaven and go to heaven. You can be changed and be, be forgiven, but you got to be, you got to be what God created you to be a holy vessel for honor. Bible says, be cleansed, be cleansed that you might be a holy vessel for honor. There's no holiness, no holiness in these campuses. Man, without holiness, no one's going to see the Lord. That's acceptable to preach. Every word is acceptable to preach. I can preach Old Testament scriptures about God. You didn't mess with my camera, I hope, did you? Check one, two. Folks, all because I need protection to make sure people don't lie. I, I, you'd be surprised, man. Protection? From the people say we, we say things that we don't and stuff. Oh, it's serious. This is spiritual warfare, man. You need to repent, man. What are you doing? Do you understand your conscience? You, you can be holy as he is holy. When Jesus, when the Bible says, be holy as I am holy, it's not. Sir, will you save me? Holy. Holy. <laughs> what are you trying to, what are you doing, man? I'm just asking you. What are you saying? I, I thought you were, I thought you were a Christian. I know. Will you, will you, will you save me again? You're, 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 you're conniving with saying something like that. You know, you know what you're doing. I think you need to really, you really need to pray about what's, what's happening here. Preach the word yourself, man. I mean, this is important. The Bible says, He who is ashamed of me and my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes with his angels in the glory of his Father. The Bible says to preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, and exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. How many times do you read the Bible? The scripture, the scripture says, I don't know, I don't, I don't count. I don't count how many times I read the word. I'm just in the word every day. Because the Bible says in Matthew 4, verse 4, it says, Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Every word comes out of the mouth of God. The Bible, Jesus said in John 3, he said the world is condemned already when they don't believe. And he does condemn the world. He said whoever doesn't believe in me is condemned already. That's a default. We have to face judgment and condemnation. But you know what? The gift of God, the Bible says that the grace of God that brings salvation teaches us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for that glorious appearing in the great hope of God. Titus chapter 2 verse 10. The grace of God it works, and I agree, you know, there's pervenient grace, but you see, the problem is, is people want to make this, this picture that's not real. Like, God just, just judges everything according to these, he gives certain graces to people before they become Christians, but you know what, it doesn't mean that they're not, they're not still headed for hell in their sin. The Bible says God is a just judge, and he's angry. Well, if they turn back, yeah. Yeah, if they turn, the Bible says that. James chapter 5, verse 19 and 20. That's good that you believe that. That's the fear of God. What he just said... Love, but he's also a consuming fire. Yes. So, There's some truth. There is judgment, whether exactly. we like we have, it or not. He is the yes. ultimate altar and judgment. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. And we're, we're, we're all at his mercy. No sin is can greater I, than the other. Whether you're homosexual, question? you're this, that, it doesn't whatever you're true. Does, true. Does, true. And he's a consuming fire. That is something we gotta think about, even as Christians. Does God still do, 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 love you huh? when you're burning in fire for the rest of eternity? Well, that's the question. Because because apart from me. Yeah, he depart from me. So, so the, 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 chance, the chance to really, the chance to have God's love is now. No, no, no. Yeah. no, no. Every time you every, every, every person that walks should have an ultimate decision to follow Jesus Christ. Well, 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 understand something. You have to understand something. Okay, not not everybody, not everybody is going to be judged necessarily by the by the the the, the, the Bible if they didn't have it. The, Bi the Bible says in Romans chapter 2, it says those who did not have the law will be judged without, w w without law. Those without law will be judged without law. It says, it says, it says but, they, but, they have a, but they have a law, but they have a law written on their heart teaching them. Their, it says their conscience excuses them. But you have a chance, yeah, he's right, you see? You have a chance because you live in America. You have no excuse. Go ahead. My question is, I understand what you're trying to do, and I'm not, I'm not down there. My question is, is fear the best way to bring people to the Father, because I because I feel like as someone who grew up in the church, I didn't go to Jesus because I was fearful of him. Uh -huh. I went to Jesus because I understood him as being my father. Okay. So my question is, are is this the most effective way to win souls? I'm yeah. not saying that There's you're wrong. I just ways. I just want to know yeah, that's true. This, this, this the person most the crowd. Exactly. But well, at, 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 at the college this is not the, the most Lord. effective. No, it's not true. Right, but it's that, that's not you want to go to God bring. because you love Him. Exactly, that's my. Well, well, well here, here's the thing. Right. Here's the thing. Who okay, here, here, never here. had an experience with here, here. God, I never had a positive experience it, with God. How do you expect them to have to come to God because of the experience is negative? If you if you didn't have like a strong conviction over your sin and revelation that you were headed to hell, there's no way you could have ever come to God. That's not necessary. The Bible says the Bible, the Bible yes, it says by the fear of God men depart from evil. That's what it says. It says it says through mercy and truth iniquity is purged, and by the fear of God men depart from evil. Proverbs, hold on a minute. 
Proverbs 16, verse 6. The Bible says, Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. 2 Corinthians 5, 11. So there's a persuasion that comes to the terror. I'm not, not doubting the love of God. It's a, it's a dual-fold message, and people want to mix it up and say it's one or the other. What I'm preaching to you is the love of God, and it is the fear of God, and it's mixed. It's, no, they're the same thing in, in the Bible. Yes, it is. Pro Let me tell you why. Because Psalm, the fear of God is spiritual. It's not... Now, the, the fear of God is spiritual. It's not the same thing. The Bible says the fear of God is clean, enduring. The Bible says the fear of God is clean, enduring forever. The Bible says the angel of the Lord encamps around those that fear him to deliver them. But the Bible says God pities those that fear him, is what it says. As a father pities his children, so the Lord pities those that fear him, is what it says. The Bible says, here's, here's a good one. God's loving kindness is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. Psalms 103. The love of God and the fear of God in one verse. You see, the Bible says, consider the goodness and the severity of God. It says, uh, severity on those who fell, but goodness if you continue in his goodness. It says, do not be haughty, but fear. That's all throughout the scriptures. Acts chapter 9, verse 31 says the early church. The early church, it says, hold on, there's this one verse and then I'll let you speak. It says the early church walked in the fear of God and the comfort of the Holy Ghost. You see this? Two things. They walked at the same time. I don't know how I walk in it too. I love God, but I fear him. I tremble. I just said, serve the Lord with fear, rejoice with trembling, kiss the son, lest he become angry and you perish in the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Psalms 2. It's wrath, man. It's it's terrifying. Go ahead. Yeah. She actually she was gonna say something before you. No, it's okay. You I have a question. Can you tell me what your testimony is? Because yeah. I, I went. This is what I'm trying to say. You're quoting scriptures that people who may never have never read the Bible before. But you know how you impact the soul? You tell them your testimony. Can you relate you that? say how God sure, has affected yeah. you personally. Uh -huh. So I want to know. Don't quote no more scriptures at me. Tell me what your <laughs> testimony is. That's what. Well, I, well, I can tell you my testimony was still still related to the Bible. Okay. Well, let well, me hear your what's wrong with that? relation. Let me hear your personal. How did you find God? God? Sure. Yeah, yeah. I, I, bet, I bet. Just so you know, I've been talking about my testimony all day today. But I. Okay. Well, I, 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 I want to hear it right now. Sure, I'll tell it to you. But you, you're kind of making it like that's. that's that's the, you know, like, no. when does it trump? Her. Well, hold on a minute, because she's giving some pretense here. I want to make sure no, I clarify. She's trying to say you're misunderstanding. Listen, in order to fear God, you have to know his strength and his presence and his power. Uh -huh. if, if I never heard about God, I don't know, I know who the heck he is. Well, 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 but, but look, 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 the Bible says faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. I don't have to give you my testimony for you to get the point. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. You know what I'm saying? Now, I could give you my testimony, and that, that will help. It is a great tool, and I use it all the time. I do. And I'm gonna, I'll show you my testimony. Part of humbleness is Christianity. Uh -huh. you need to learn to well, I'm preaching, though. I don't have to listen. I have to preach. No, no, no. no. You're, not, you're not getting it. There's, there's 15 of you, and if I, let, if I just sit here and listen, every person will talk, and then the word gets stopped. The word, the word needs to continue to go on. I, I listen. Look, I listen a lot. I listen probably more than I, more than I should, honestly. I listen probably more than I should. What is your name? I'm Adam. How are you? Okay, I'm Nina. My son's okay. name is Adam. Okay. What you're doing is fine. You okay. want people to get to know about the Lord, okay. and that's perfectly fine. Okay. And the Lord is love. God is love, and He's also consuming fire. That's right. He gives grace, and then He will give judgment. That's right. He gives you, you know, uh, good, and then if you do bad. He, you have to suffer the consequences. But here is what she's saying. If you tell people your testimony, it's easier for me to relate to you. You say to me, I was a drug addict and I came out of drugs and this is my powerful testimony. No, she said, she said to give me your testimony without using the word and that's dangerous speech, okay? Okay. Anybody, anybody, that, anybody that's looking for some sort of something else besides the word is in danger and that's what I'm concerned about. I'll give you my testimony. The devil doesn't obey the word. The devil doesn't obey the word. That's the difference between the Christian. The devil, the devil doesn't want you to know the word. The devil doesn't. The devil doesn't let the word go on. The devil exactly. That's exactly right. Am I trying to pull you from the word of God? Am I trying to tempt you, saying, "Hey, if these stones, you know, if change these stones into bread, if you're the son of," am I trying to tempt you? If you, if you change it, that's what he did. He said, "He said all oh, these things can be yours. Jump off this building." He said, "He said if it, if you're." Well, of course. And he said, you know, he said to Jesus, he tempted him. I'm not trying to tempt you to sin right now when I preach the word to you. I'm telling him to get out of your sin. That's what Jesus, that's what the devil did. The devil was trying, the devil even said to worship me and I'll give you everything. It tempted Jesus. But you have yet to share your testimony with this crowd. No, I've, I've, I've preached about my testimony. And, that, and that's not required. 
I might not share my testimony now just to prove to you that I don't have to. I don't have to prove to give you my testimony. I'd rather you hear the word of God than my testimony. I'll be honest with you. The word of God never returns void. That's what the Bible says. The word of God never returns void. You no, you lie. Look, if you don't, if you can't receive the word, you can't be saved. Are you serious? Yes, it says it says it says that those who hear the Jesus said in John chapter eight. Let me tell you why. John chapter eight verse forty seven. Jesus said, "He who hears God's word is." He who hears God's word is of God, therefore you do not hear because you're not of God. That's what Jesus said. You have to hear the word. He said, be careful how you hear, he said. He said, he said, he said, be careful how you hear. He said, to he who has more be given. You need to repent. Folks, you need to repent. You seeing all this spiritual warfare going on here? We're trying to sort out. We got people here that don't really understand why I preach the word. The word of God is what sets you free. You need the word. You need the truth. Truth that sets you free. Yes, yeah, the goodness of God, it's the love of God, the mercy of God. I try to talk about His grace. I try to tell you about His forbearance, long suffering, and goodness. Not wanting you to perish, but all to come to repentance. That's what God wants for you. But you know what? He's a consuming fire. He's an angry with the wicked every day. The judgment of God, the Bible says, return to righteousness. All the upright in heart will follow it. There's judgment. There's hell. Hell is real. Destruction, lake of fire, burning and suffering forever. Torment. There's torment in hell. The smoke of their torment, the Bible says. Ascends forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night. Folks, I need you to know about that. I want you to know about the torment where they're weeping and wailing and they're suffering because they wouldn't repent of their pornography. Because they were wicked people, sinners, wicked sinners, not just sinners. The Bible calls them wicked sinners. Folks, what, do you, what should you do? You should cry to God. You should cry out to God. You should say, God, mercy on me, a sinner. I'm not worthy. Bow, bow the knee. Cry to cry out. Spare not. Oh, Christ will say, I am an example of God's loving kindness. I know about his mercy. I know what it means to be wrapped up in sin. I was, the, I was in bondage. I could not get free, man. I tried everything. I tried the self-help. I tried. Oh, but when I turned to God in truth, oh, the light went on in my spirit. I became born again. When you get a born again spirit, the Bible, the Bible says you get imparted spirit of grace. There's grace unto the hearers, it says. But those who have ears, let them hear what the Spirit says to the churches. It's a, it's a song of righteousness. The Bible says in Revelation 15, it says, I saw something like a sea of glass mingled with fire. It says those who had victory over the beast, over his name, over his image, they had harps of God and they sang the song of God, the servant of Moses. They sang a song, folks, a new song. Hey, you sing praise to God, you have thanksgiving in your heart. Oh, that only comes from somebody who's grateful. Grateful because God has been holding back. Holding back the judgment. Holding back hell. Holding back death. So you, so you can get ready. You get ready. You study. You get in the word. You repent. Quit living this lifestyle. Quit agreeing with the wicked. All this stuff in America is going to get torn down one day. Everything. Jesus said that not one stone will be left upon another. Everything will be burnt to the ground. You know, this, this message is over and over again in the Bible. The Bible says the end of all things is at hand. It is now, the Bible says. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand, Jesus said. It is now. It's not going to be tomorrow for you. It is now. And if you don't get a hold of the kingdom...